Thank you very much for the opportunity over the next few minutes to share our project looking at the utilization of cytoreductive nephrectomy and patient survival in the targeted therapy era. No financial uh, disclosures outside of funding sources. We know that cytoreductive nephrectomy has utility and benefit in patients treated in the cytokine era, and we know this from randomized clinical data. But the utility of cytoreductive nephrectomy in the targeted therapy era is not well established and is widely debated. We sought to look at the temporal trends of utilization of cytoreductive nephrectomy, as well as patient survival, comparing survival in the targeted therapy era with previous. We hypothesized that cytoreductive nephrectomy continues to offer a survival benefit for patients. And to evaluate this hypothesis, we looked at SEER data encompassing more than 20,000 patients with metastatic renal cell carcinoma between 1993 and 2010. This is our table one showing the patient demographics stratified by the receipt of cytoreductive nephrectomy. And as we've already talked about at this meeting earlier today, anytime you evaluate the benefit of a surgical procedure, in particularly in evaluating retrospective data, you have to control for selection bias and you have to be aware of its potential to confound the results. And as you can expect, patients that received cytoreductive nephrectomy differed from the remainder of the cohort in every possible way that we could measure. So first, to evaluate the utility of cytoreductive nephrectomy, knowing that selection bias and other potential confounders exist in retrospective data, we evaluated the utilization of cytoreductive nephrectomy by year. And cytoreductive nephrectomy increased from its lowest value at the beginning of the study period and peaked in 2004 with 39% of patients receiving a cytoreductive nephrectomy in that year. And when you perform joint point regression, you see that a single joint point best explains the data. And this occurred in 2004. And beginning in 2005, there was a modest reduction in the utilization of cytoreductive nephrectomy coinciding with the introduction of targeted therapies. So next, we wanted to evaluate what patient and tumor factors were associated with the receipt of cytoreductive nephrectomy. So we fit univariable and multivariable logistic regression models to predict uh, patients' receipt of cytoreductive nephrectomy, and we identified several interesting disparities. First, older patients were less likely to receive a cytoreductive nephrectomy, and this does not come as a, as a surprise. But black patients and other patient categories were also less likely to receive a cytoreductive nephrectomy. But for the purpose of this study, evaluating cytoreductive nephrectomy in the targeted therapy era, I want to bring your attention to the year of the patient's diagnosis. And when this was evaluated as a continuous variable or stratified by treatment era, after adjusting for patient and tumor characteristics, it was not an independent predictor of receipt of cytoreductive nephrectomy. And this suggests that the modest decline in utilization may not be due to physicians changing their selection criteria for patients for surgery. Next, we evaluated the overall unadjusted survival for patients that received cytoreductive nephrectomy. And so here's our Kaplan-Meier curves. And in the blue, you can see patients treated in the cytokine era. And in the red, the targeted therapy era. If you look at the dashed lines at the bottom, you can see that patients that did not receive a cytoreductive nephrectomy experienced a mild benefit in the targeted therapy era, with their median overall survival increasing from three months to four months. And patients that did receive a cytoreductive nephrectomy, we see a much more significant increase, ranging from 13 to 19 months in the targeted therapy era. And here on the right, I've plotted the median difference in survival for patients that did receive cytoreductive nephrectomy by year again. And you can see that this difference has increased over time and has continued to increase in the targeted therapy era. So next, to adjust for selection bias, we employed several epidemiologic and econometric models. The first, we performed a multivariable proportional hazards model. And this identified the benefit of cytoreductive nephrectomy, offering, offering a 60% reduction in the hazard mortality, of mortality. And the treatment era was also associated with an independent benefit in survival, a 13% reduction in the hazard. And if you plot the hazard associated with cytoreductive nephrectomy in a fully adjusted model by year, you can see that the hazard or improved survival for patients that did receive a cytoreductive nephrectomy has continued, and the lowest hazard ratios for cytoreductive nephrectomy are in the most recent study years, which represent targeted therapy era. 
Next, we employed propensity score matching to further evaluate and control for selection bias. And what I've shown here is the full cohorts Kaplan-Meier curve on the left and the propensity score matched cohort on the right. And you can see that the overall survival curves are essentially unchanged. And similarly, when we evaluate the uh, Cox proportional hazards models, the point estimates are very similar for the propensity score matched group. Third, we employed a difference in, a, in difference analysis, and this is an econometric method that's not commonly seen in clinical research, but is well suited to testing new therapies in differential eras. Essentially, we're taking advantage of a natural experiment, which is in the targeted therapy era. The systemic therapy for metastatic kidney cancer has changed, while the technical aspects of a cytoreductive nephrectomy have not. So we can now compare the outcomes for patients that receive surgery from before and after using this model to see if there's an improvement or worsening of overall survival in the targeted therapy error for these patients. And what I can show you here is that cytoreductive nephrectomy in this model retains its overall survival benefit, that patients treated in the targeted therapy era also had a survival benefit, but the interaction between cytoreductive nephrectomy and targeted therapy era provided an additional benefit. In other words, Patients that were treated in the targeted era lived longer. Patients that received a cytoreductive nephrectomy lived longer. But the best survival was for patients that received a cytoreductive nephrectomy in the targeted therapy era, even when compared to those that received surgery previously. So in conclusion, while we've done a lot of heavy lifting to try to address selection bias, we are still evaluating retrospective data. So for that reason, we still await the outcomes of prospective trials, such as the Carmina trial, to evaluate the true benefit of cytoreductive nephrectomy in this patient population. We now know that approximately one in three patients receives a cytoreductive nephrectomy and that in the targeted therapy era, at least through 2010, the utilization of cytoreductive nephrectomy was declining slightly. But despite this slight decline in the use of cytoreductive nephrectomy, the retrospective data after, fully att of, after multiple attempts to adjust for selection bias suggests that there is a survival benefit for patients that receive surgery in the targeted therapy era, and a suggestion that this benefit actually may be greater in the targeted therapy era when compared with previous years. Thank you very much for your attention.